gentlemen. As a finalist for the Perverse Prize 2018 competition, I am proud that my book entitled The Last Journey of the Sambal Eunuch, Edmar Agenda, is now published. I wish sincerely to thank the Perverse Prize judges for their recommendation and the Perverse team for their exhaustive and insightful editorial work. Without them, my work would not have reached this important milestone. My book tells the greatest episode of Chinese sailing in world history. It took place in the Ming Dynasty in the early 15th century, starting from 1405 and lasting for about 30 years. This was the time when China's national strength was top in the world. And China was the only country which could send well-organized, well-equipped, and largest ships carrying huge numbers of mariners for expeditions around the world to maintain and expand its tributary system. The Santa Yunak Zenhe was the admiral who led these giant fleets, the treasure fleets, across the oceans on seven different exhibitions. But soon after the seventh voyage in the 1430s, due to internal struggle at the imperial court, the Ming emperors ended this activity and ordered all the records and maps of these voyages to be destroyed. Hence, the extent of epic voyages of the Ming treasure fleets has become a topic of debate up to date. People want to know, did Zheng He and his crew made a transatlantic vo voyage to reach the Americas during their seventh and last voyage. Nearly two centuries later, in 1597, Chinese writer Luo Mao Deng wrote an epic work, which he entitled An Account of the Western World Voyage of the Sambao Eunuch, Sambao Tai Jian Xi Yang Ji. It contains the most detailed narrative of Zheng He's voyages and includes materials not recorded by the official Ming documents. Luo's account is difficult to understand and analyze in many ways, but it has been regarded as having historical value by leading sinologists in modern days. I decided that Lord's work would be a natural starting point for resolving the enigma surrounding Zheng He's voyages. After six and a half years of sorrow analysis, I have finally extracted from Lord's work the complete transatlantic navi navigational routes and timelines of Zheng He's last journey. In my book, I also present the evidence and idea that Jephthah's last expedition plausibly reached the ancient American Indian city, Cahokia, in the central Mississippi Valley in 1433, about 60 years before Christopher Columbus landed for the first time in the Americas. Furthermore, I confirmed the Lord's revelation that Zheng He's mariners also reached the same section of the Mississippi Valley in 1423 during their sixth voyage. My finding supports Gary Mendy's bold claim in his startling work published in 2002 
which he entitled 1421, the year China discovered the world. He asserted that the Ming Chinese sailors and ships reached far beyond what was previously accepted in modern times. My book has not only achieved a scholarly success, but also has popular appeal. It surely is a detective story, like Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson taking you on a journey through history. It tells you how Admiral Zhenhe, a great man, and his sailors, utterly brave and adventurous, conquered the seas to become discoverers of the world beyond. Finally, I would like to share you with you that these great sailors recorded on the memorial seal in the Nanshan Temple in Changle, Fujian Province, China, before they started out on their seventh voyage. We have beheld in the ocean huge waves like mountain rising sky high, and we have set eyes on barbarian regions far away, hidden in the blue transparency of light vapor while ourselves loftily unfurled like car clouds, day and night continued their course, rapid like that of the star, <coughs> traversing those savage waves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.